that's pretty wild as you can see three rainbows never seen that there's that one right there and then two like crossing over each other right there hard to see on the camera but first time for everything I've been burning a candle at both ends for a long time now and getting pretty run down a little tired uh, today I was gonna do a lazy day and work around the house but then Clayton was like hey I'm in Nanaimo let's go dive so I figured hey why not I can rest some other time uh, so Clayton and I were here in Shimanas uh, we are gonna launch this little boat and cruise around look for bottles might explore those dry docks and the weather is beautiful the tide's super low and the visibility looked okay. Uh, I guess you never know until you're in there. See that every time I, I get in the water. Uh, but it's the truth. Uh, fingers crossed we get good viz. Should be a fun day. Get wet and explore. The first spot we hit were the World War II dry docks. This spot is totally accessible from shore, but we had a boat. Avionics for the wind. We're gonna drop our anchor right on top of this. And 4.5 meters of water is the top where it sits. A uh, really shallow day with the tides today, so that means our breath holds will be long and glorious. Yeah, we should be on top of it right now. There we go. If you don't have Navionics, I'd highly suggest paying for the subscription. It's my go-to app while planning out dives and scouting out new areas. The visibility was horrendous on the first couple meters, but it opened up nicely after a short descent. This was only my second time diving here, and I was just as blown away as I was on the first. The dry dock sank in 2012, but it doesn't take long for mother nature to take over in the ocean, and these massive man-made superstructures are now a new home to a wide variety of aquatic life forms. And no, not aquatic monkey and I, we're just visitors. Some of my favorite diving conditions are when you have clear water at depth and a layer of muck above. Not sure what it is about it, but it just seems to make all the colors super vivid and just pop out. Don't get me wrong, 30 meter viz on a nice sunny day is hard to beat. The dry docks were originally gonna be used as a floating key with stores and other amenities on the platform, but that project never came to be. The docks eventually filled with rainwater and started to sink one at a time. Currently, there are three in total on the ocean's bottom. Luckily, none contain fuel at the time in which they sank and the creosote on the wood is old enough that it doesn't pose any major environmental risk. Check out the visibility we were working with here. Pretty wild, eh? We only did a handful of dives each. Despite the excellent conditions, moving on was the right choice. So at our second spot, we're kind of cruising around to areas that we can't reach by shore because kind of pointless to do a boat dive off somewhere we could swim to. So that do dry dock, really good visibility out there, but at the same time, we'll uh, continue on. We found some cool looking structure, anchored the boat, and held our breath. We didn't find anything to ride home a boat, but hey, at least we know where not to dive next time. At the end of the day, it still made the cut for YouTube. The sky was insanely beautiful on this day, perfect conditions for being on the water. Shimanus has an extensive amount of history. Clayton and I thought we might find the jackpot of old bottles near the downtown core. We didn't find quite what we were looking for, but at the same time, we were not disappointed in the slightest. There wasn't any structure to harbor lane cod or rockfish, but we found some neat stuff. I came across a massive pile of squid eggs around 15 meters. I've been wanting to find a squid jigging spot close to home for a while now, and finding these piles gives me hope that the government dock in Chimenez might be a place worth trying. Generally, fishing spots are hush-hush, but when it comes to squid jigging, the more people out, the merrier, as it gets the squid feeding frenzy going. If anyone knows a good spot in Nanaimo, feel free to help me out. Clayton found a bottle at depth, and only after he cleaned it out did he find this small octopus inside. Apparently, people were giving him grief over this clip on TikTok, saying that he stole the octopus's home. Although the octopus was probably disturbed, I'm sure it doesn't need humankind's trash on the seafloor to find habitat. If you want to get upset about something, go walk the beach and look at all the plastic washed up on the shoreline. And instead of being a keyboard warrior, go clean up that plastic. Clayton has literally pulled up thousands of pounds of trash from the ocean 
He's the last person anyone should be giving a hard time to. He's done more for this octopus than the vast majority of humans on planet Earth. We enjoyed this unique experience, said goodnight to the octopus, and called it a death. On the way in, we were blessed with yet another amazing spectacle. Rainbows on rainbows, so close we could practically touch the end. We tried, but they were just out of reach. Rainbows, something that will never get old. We're just wrapping up the evening. Really, really calm night out here. Beautiful sunset. Had a really good time in the water too. Saw that octopus, saw all those squid eggs. Got some exercise. Visibility was good at depth. So that's a really nice treat. Waking up nice and early tomorrow and we're gonna go down Newcastle. Looked around again for bottles. Might check out that shipwreck that's uh, just outside of Newcastle, the Rift Toe, I think it's called. And uh, maybe Gabriel at Bluffs. What a fantastic evening though. Clayton grabbed some crab and we might go cook that up. Might get some pizza actually, I'm kinda hungry. I want food now. Alrighty, see everybody in the ham. How's it going, Heather? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Rafi. How you doing, bud? <laughs> Just flying everywhere. So Clayton crashed at my place last night and Heather met up. We're here in Nanaimo. We're about to launch the boat, get in the water, dive around Nanaimo. Gonna probably hit up Newcastle, that wreck. I don't know if we'll go to Gabriola Bluffs or not. Probably just a relaxed day. The visibility looked really great off the dock. Uh, we're gonna be getting in real quickly here. Newcastle is just a short boat ride from Nanaimo, but it feels like a completely different area. It still remains one of my favorite places to visit. Oh, it's full of seawater. Oh, it's not a full one? No. Name. Throw back. <laughs> <laughs> so we're at Newcastle, uh, it's a pretty common spot for tourists and everything and I can see this is pretty sheltered so back in the day there'd be a ton of boats anchored in here. So we're gonna find some old bottles and whatever else. I'm just here to swim around and find pretty things. And be a mermaid. Ah uh, yes. <laughs> nice, <point>. nice. <laughs> we actually spent a lot of time looking around here and despite a solid effort we came up short. The bottom is pretty muddy and my guess is anything dropped overboard quickly gets buried by the sediment. I did see this one peculiar looking fish though. An ID would be appreciated. We didn't find anything old, but Clayton wanted to scope around the docks to see if he could find anything new. I'm no stranger to snorkeling off Newcastle. My brother and I used to come here every summer when we were kids. There's me in the year 2000. I'm still a kid at heart, just a bit bigger. The conditions were pretty nice, so we moved forward with a Gabriola Bluff dive. It wasn't very much around Nanaimo, but uh, we cruised over here to the Gabriela Bluffs. This place is so scenic, it's really hard to do it justice on camera. All the rock structures, the seabirds, we see a turkey vulture over there hanging out in the sun. And uh, the diving here is actually really good too. I was here years ago with Tom and Riley. Uh, it's all a rockfish conservation area. Can't spearfish here, but uh, saw a big link cod last time. And the structure above the water stretches below. Uh, so really cool formations. Uh, we're gonna dive here around probably, probably for a little bit. Wind seems to be picking up. Then we're hitting up the iconic Dingy Dog Pub. And we're gonna grab some food, bow down, we're all hungry. And if we have energy, uh, hit that rift to align up that tug that was sank the artificial reef. Uh, but that one is a big if, we're not sure. Whether you dive or not, this place is a must see. In case you're ever wondering how Aquatic Monkey came up with the name for his YouTube channel, want to know further as this clip speaks for itself. Hard to film this action, but uh, we just choked that around that little nub there. And we're gonna dive under this overhang. How beautiful is that? So that was a mission, but we are finally at our spot. I would say this is the coolest place I've ever tied up to. I, I would say that with confidence. Look at the uh, structure even right above me here. It's amazing what time can do to these sandstones. All the erosion from wind and waves. Uh, yeah, I hope the diving's good. I can see a bunch of an enemies right below us. The viz doesn't look horrible. Yay.
Having these walls with endless depth always seems to play with my mind mentally, especially once I reach negative buoyancy. My mind goes to the worst case scenario and I picture my unresponsive body floating down to depth. Looking down the side of a dark wall is also just plain creepy. With that said, having a respect for these dives is a healthy one, as if the dive were to go south, it's bye-bye PNW Samson. I never tend to push my limits while diving, I'm not a professional freediver, and I never plan on being one. With that said, I am noticing my diving abilities naturally progressing over time, and I'm gradually getting more comfortable in conditions I find uncomfortable. The structure on some of these ledges resting on the walls were mind-blowing. I wish I knew more about the formation of Vancouver Island and the surrounding areas. I'll do the research one day. We didn't see a huge amount of life considering we were diving in an RCA, but the odd copper came out and said hi. Check out the anemones on this rock scallop. Clayton followed me down on a couple of drops. I'll be honest, I really appreciated this clip as I'm usually the one filming, not the one being filmed. It was cool seeing myself from this vantage point. Color fades with depth, so if you want to remain visible, contrast is key. Black on white is essential, but some pink tape around your snorkel makes it easier to see you at the surface. We ended up burning the majority of our energy diving at Newcastle Island, so by the time we got to the bluffs, we were already pretty tired. As noted, this isn't the place to push your limits, so we only stayed for a short while. Thanks for the footage, Clayton. Check out Aquatic Monkey on YouTube for some very similar content to mine. Clayton's doing some amazing things for our lakes, rivers, and oceans. This one goes out to all the octopus lovers. On one of my last drops, I did spot a lingcod, a decent sized one at that. Remember, all fish are off limits in a rockfish conservation area, not just rockfish. I also saw this stunning anemone. I'll admit, marine identification is not my forte. Maybe one day I'll be able to identify everything, but I won't lose sleep over it if I can't. Heather wasn't joking about being a mermaid. Our original plan was to hit the Dingy Dock Pub. I was excited to take Heather and Clayton there as it was a childhood favorite. But after some weird vibes, we went to Pat O'Brien's for a great meal and some excellent service. So I think that's a wrap. We're gonna take off. It's funny, uh, the last two days I was just gonna relax and not dive and just catch up on some relaxation, but I guess you know how that goes. Now I got a, another episode to edit, so I can't complain there. Uh, next weekend, heading to Alert Bay on a solo mission. Uh, I love diving for bottles, but when you dive with people for bottles and they find one that you wanted, it's kind of like buying someone a lottery ticket and then winning. <laughs> at least that's the way I look at it. Call me selfish, sure, whatever. But I also need a trip to myself. Uh, it's nice to do things on my own schedule. I rarely have that opportunity. And with my kids in Bermuda, my wife gone, hey, taking advantage. So, solo trip to Alert Bay. Gonna be there for two nights and an Airbnb. Uh, so, back at it next weekend. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, some cool dives in the last two days. Saw some octopus, dove that dry dark and hit that wall off Gabriella Bluffs. Really stoked on that. Good viz there too. So peace everybody. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoy the video, throw it a like because it helps my channel. Uh, peace and love. Take care.